We were playing on Accrington College pitch. There were a few tackles flying in from the other team because we just kept scoring and scoring. And then I managed to go off actually as a, a sub before I got tackled. Well, I was facing my own goal. I played the ball out to my left and just as I managed to turn around, got clashed from behind. Just didn't see it coming at all. And before I knew it, I went floor in pain. I went to stand up, and then I realised I couldn't stand up because my leg was snapped in both my tib and fib. And everyone started going mad. So after about 10 minutes out of it, then it started really hurting. And when I heard someone say my foot's facing the other way, <laughs> that's when I thought it must be broke. And when the ambulance actually got there, they had to twist my foot back round into place, and that's when I felt the pain. Then when the nurses were coming in, for some reason, I don't know why, because Tom was in his football gear and he had his football shoes on, but they said, Tommy, how did you do it? And he said, somebody tackled me on a football pitch. And they actually looked at me and looked back at Tom and said, are you sure that's how it's happened? And he said, yeah, why? And he says, because the injuries you've just sustained is that bad that it's usually somebody's been hit by a car and been run over. Effectively, the Lord, really, because I had to move my bedroom downstairs into the front room. My mum had to take a lot of time off work because I couldn't do anything for myself really because if I wanted a drink, I ran crutches and I couldn't get up out of the bed myself, someone had to get me out of the bed. So I, I couldn't even just go and make a drink. About two weeks in, he had really bad pain in his leg, really bad pins and needles and we ended up ringing an ambulance for him again because couldn't, I couldn't get him there, he just couldn't move, he was in that much pain. And when they got him to the hospital, they said the bone had moved. Where they'd manipulated it together, the bone had splinted. So it had gone down about two centimetres. It was very emotional watching your son suffer, obviously. Yeah, I did work full time, uh, doing pipe fitting and welding, so I obviously couldn't go into work at all. The work were really good with it though. Eventually I got a job in a call centre, so that were a lot better because I just sat down on a phone, didn't have to do any moving around. And this year I started an apprenticeship in engineering, so I've only just got what I actually wanted to do back this year which was three years down the line now. <laughs> well, it was my dad that to be honest, really wanted me to claim and said, because you're losing a lot of, like, I, I weren't really too bothered at the time, I was just more interested in getting better because I just couldn't really move out of bed. I just felt down all the time. So it would give Paul a ring, Paul seemed really enthusiastic about it and really up for it. He arranged for us to go to his office and meet him and got shuffled in on my wheelchair. Going to see him for the first time went really well, to be honest, because made you feel really welcoming and then went into the meeting room for a few pictures up of uh, Burnley and straight away I'm a Rovers fan so um, the banter started straight away there really with Paul being a Burnley fan and me being a big Rovers fan. It, it was just totally different to what I expected, I expected just suits and files basically and, and that, it weren't really like that. I really like sitting down with someone in pub and talking to him really, it was well then. And then he actually come to us, to my dad's house and he met us all there and all the witnesses and we all just sat down, talked about it all. He interviewed us one to one. After going to their solicitors, they actually made an offer of £15,000 and Paul basically laughed when he told me and said, don't accept it. But being 17 and being offered £15,000, I wanted to take it. I went over at me thinking I can get a car and that's it, I'll be happy because all I wanted was a car at the time. I just passed my test the day before I actually broke my leg. But Paul was like, no, I don't take it. Then eventually they come back with an offer of £60,000. To me, my heart was set on taking it. But then at that point, Paul set up a meeting in Manchester with a Beresford. When that £60,000 offer came in, that was a really hard decision to make for Tom and for us as a family. And I can remember that night, he just couldn't settle and he tried to ring Paul because that's the sort of person he was. You could ring him whenever you wanted to. We declined it. And I'd never been so nervous in my life from that. I was just constantly on edge waiting for a phone call off Paul to say there's been another affair or something and then I got myself a car by this point and I was driving and my phone rang off Paul. So I pulled over and he said I hope you sat down for this. And then he um, told me I'd been offered £110,000 and then that was it. I just didn't know what to do, I thought I could just win the lottery. <laughs> but I'd recommend him, I'd recommend him to anyone. He's a very helpful man. He's constantly keeping you up to date. It's literally a phone call or a text away all the time if you've got any questions. He's got a lot of time for you. He will always come round to the house if you can't get to him. It's just, he'll always, it feels like, it sounds like he'll always go out your way for you, to be honest.